Thank you all. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and I want to start by thanking the volunteers who are working hard to make this uh, conference possible. It fits perfectly with what I'm going to talk about today. Um, is my first slide up? There we go. OK. Uh, so I study um, the origins of human nature. And what I want to do in five minutes is challenge um, a belief in Western culture that is thousands of years old. Um, and uh, the idea is that our species is sort of the most intelligent species on the planet. And what I want to suggest instead is that maybe our species isn't any more unique than any other species on the planet. Now, as Andrew said, I'm very lucky, and I get to play lots of games with other animals to try to figure out how they think. And I have often done what many people do, is I work with um, chimpanzees, and I compare chimpanzees and how they solve problems to young children or other humans. Now, generally, what we do is we talk about um, and we glorify our technology, the fact that we're so communicative, the fact that we are so innovative, uh, and that we can develop all sorts of new technologies to solve problems, social media, et cetera. Um, and it's easy to get very excited about how great humans are. OK. But there's one little problem. Because what few people have done, and what we're doing now, is we're comparing ourselves to bonobos. And when you start comparing humans to bonobos, and you actually start thinking about many of the problems that the social innovator fellows are trying to solve, um, well, things don't look as rosy anymore for humans being the most intelligent of all the apes. By the way, this is the ape family which you belong to. OK, so a bonobo, what is it? Well, I bet many people in this room know, but the most important thing for you to know about what a bonobo is is that little Mimi here can dominate Big Tatongo. OK? Now, this flips most of what you know about animal behavior on its head. Usually, a larger animal is dominant and can get its way with a smaller animal. Not the case uh, when Mimi is around Tatongo. Well, how does she do it, you might ask? So this is two female bonobos coming in. And what you're going to see is they're going to share food together. And they're incredibly tolerant of one another. They never fight each other, never. Female bonobos rarely, rarely ever fight one another. And they have this beautiful social lubrication. If there's any kind of social tension where they're upset potentially with one another, they have sex. Their, their clitorises have actually evolved such that they can rub them together and potentially have an orgasm in these types of situations. So the answer of how bonobos do it is girl power. <laughs> OK. So when we think about some of the things, some of the social issues we have as the human species, and we line them up and compare these three species to each other, um, well, think about stranger phobia, gang murder, sexual coercion, sexual taboos, infanticide, and a proclivity to gamble, as we learned about in the last couple of years. Um, well, chimps have these problems, too. Even the astronaut may have the problem, even though he can fly to the moon. Bonobos don't. So if you were to ask me who the most intelligent species on this table is, I'd say it's the bonobo. And I sure as heck want to understand its psychology so I can be more like it. OK. So what I do is I go to uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I work in Kinshasa uh, with bonobos. And we do studies like this. This is the first Congolese student to ever study bonobo psychology. I hated the music when my wife made this video, but now I love it. She's going to put food in a room and just give the bonobo the chance to potentially share. It's getting a little blurry, unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad that it got a little blurry for you. But what happens is the bonobo opens the door and voluntarily shares. The reason we ran this study was to understand um, whether bonobos, when they're being kind to each other, is it really that they're so good-natured? 
Is it that we can experimentally test whether they're really, in their heart, very nice? And it ends up that bonobos, like some humans, will voluntarily share with one another. So we're trying to get inside the bonobo psyche. And what I want to leave you with is the bad news, which is the reason the animals are where they are where I work is because there's a raging pet trade and bushmeat trade. And I'm excited to say we're doing our work very differently. We don't work with laboratory animals. We work in these sanctuaries. And we're trying to promote the conservation and welfare of these animals in Africa where they live. So I want to thank you. If you need more information and you want to see the video, and it'll actually run online, um, I would encourage you to go to Friends of Bonobos or Bonobo Handshake. The book uh, Bonobo Handshake was written by my wife about our work in Congo. Thank you very much.